Hey guys, it's Mark and Laurie with Gables on the Go. Hey y'all. Hey, for you guys that are new to our channel, uh, Laurie and I are real estate agents down here in the beautiful Florida Keys. So if you ever need any help with real estate, be sure to give us a call. And today, we're gonna answer a question that we get a lot, a lot mm -hmm. on the channel. What is the best area of the Florida Keys to live? That's all personal preference. Or what is the best area in the Florida Keys <laughs> to come on vacation? Well, we're going to try to answer those questions for you, obviously, in our opinion. There's going to be a thousand answers to this. True. But come along with us. And while we're uh, kind of riding and talking, we thought we'd take you along with us and just let you see some of the scenery going out through our neighborhood, out onto the reef, wherever we go today. And instead of just uh, keeping the camera focused on me and Laurie <laughs> and a lot of talking. <laughs> we'll give you some beauty to look at. <laughs> yeah, you get some scenery to look at. So yeah. come along and take a boat ride with us and we will try to answer the question of where's the best place to live in the Florida Keys? Or vacation. Well, as Laurie and I are navigating out our canal here in Ramrod Key, Florida. Also known as Summerland, and we'll tell you about that. <laughs> we are on Ramrod Key, yeah, but mm -hmm. our, our mailing address is Summerlin Key, which is in, in, encompasses a, several different keys, and yeah. that's because the post office is in Summerlin. But we're in Ramrod. Mm -hmm. Breeze Swept Beach Estates is our neighborhood down here in the we're considered the lower keys so the florida keys guys are 110 miles long from the upper portion of the keys all the way down to key west uh, we do get calls a lot people or comments and people saying uh, we want to come to key west but what they mean is we want to come to the keys they didn't realize that the florida keys comprise a lot more than key west key right west. that's right <laughs> So we'll try to talk a little bit about that today and um, give you a general idea of what it's like to be down here in the different areas. So the Florida Keys are basically um, divided up, at least if you ask a local, they're divided up into uh, the upper keys, the middle keys, and the lower keys. And the upper keys consists of everything from about Key Largo down to eh, somewhere around Isla Mirada. I don't know if there's an official line somewhere. I'm sure there's not. Mm -hmm. Uh, then from Isla Mirada down to about just before you get to Marathon. Marathon's kind of the center of the keys, so that's kind of the, the, the middle. middle keys there. And then mm -hmm. once you cross over the Seven Mile Bridge and you get down into Big Pine, mm -hmm. right, from there basically down. And guys, I may be, you know, off. I'm, I've, I'm not a local here. I'm not a lifetimer. So you <laughs> natives, I know you're going to correct me on this. Uh, somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah, somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So upper keys, middle keys, lower keys. Yeah. Um, and people ask us which part of the keys is the best part to live in. Laurie, how do we answer that question? We always <laughs> answer it with, well, our favorite part of the keys to live in <laughs> is yeah. uh, the middle keys. Yeah, marathon. marathon. Um, but that's where we vacation so long and we've lived there. So we know so many people, um, a lot of fun, a lot of things to do. It's got a little more nightlife than say, um, the Big lower pine. keys, <laughs> Big pine. yeah. Um, not as much as Key West. It's not crazy like that. Yeah. Um, Probably not as much night, light knife, uh, light, light knife. Night, nightlife, nightlife, nightlife yeah. as, um, Isla Mirada, I would say. Or Probably even Key Largo. I mean, it's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on up that way for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they have a big community park where they have a lot of festivals and things. So that's yeah. always a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a lot going on in the Upper Keys for sure. Uh, the Middle Keys for me and Laurie are a very comfortable place. It's kind of a combination of a little family atmosphere with, you know, enough nightlife to to keep us party animals happy. <laughs> At 50 something years old, we are not party hard. We're not, uh, we can't, we can't hack the Key West thing for uh, very long at all. No, no. But uh, anyway, you know, so there, you know, there could be the argument I would think that maybe aesthetically mm -hmm. the upper keys are a little prettier. I think Almorada is the prettiest 
of the keys to drive through as far as how they keep the sides of the roads and the businesses and everything's really beautiful. Um, Marathon is kind of a little homely, I think. <laughs> homely, that's a good word. That's a <laughs> when good you word. drive down through there. Um, but it all counts when you get on the water. Doesn't matter what it looks like from the road because you're not going to spend your time standing out on the road. You're going to be on the yeah, water. Yeah, and and to Marathon's defense, since we said Marathon was homely, <laughs> love Even Marathon, we love guys, it. <laughs> love Marathon. Um, it, Marathon is an older looking community mm -hmm. as a whole, and so from the road, um, the homes look look older, look smaller. And you get up into the Isla Mirada area and the Tavernier area, things are probably a little bit more impressive in general mm -hmm. from the road, but in Marathon, I think you'll find, and I've said this in videos before, if you guys have watched our older stuff, um, when you get out on the water and you go behind the houses, sort of like the houses you can see in our neighborhood here, um, you know, things pretty up a lot. And even that little single level, tiny cinder block house that you see in Marathon that looks like nothing from the mm -hmm. street side, behind it, you've got a giant pool, tiki bar, you know, beautiful water, your boat right there, and the whole atmosphere just changes. It does. So you really can't judge the houses from the road, especially in Marathon. And I would say that also for uh, Big Pine and our area, Ramrod, True. would you think? True, but I don't. you don't really see a whole lot of homes from the road specifically, um, more businesses and things. Yep. So you're going to see, you know, the businesses, when you got to turn down a road and get off the US-1 before you're going to see the housing yeah. and what that looks like. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So for, uh, let's say for a couple, mm -hmm. no kids, where would you go if you're vacationing in the Florida Keys? Well, vacationing, if you're vacationing in the Florida Keys, you're probably going to end up in Marathon or Key Colony Beach, which is right next to Marathon. Basically, you think it's in it, but it's not. Yeah, um, because of the seven night rentals, right? Yeah, the seven night rentals. But then again, you might want to go to Key West because you've got all the nightlife. You do have the water. You have more yep. beaches. Um, and there are not a whole lot of beaches down here. And they're not big like the Panhandle beaches or anything. No. No, the beaches down here are sandy shorelines yeah. laced with coral <laughs> and limestone. So wear your water shoes. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it can get a little rough. So I would think one of two things. I would think the younger, let's say a younger couple, mm -hmm. 20s, 30s, dare I say even 40s, <laughs> uh, with no kids, just want to come to the Keys and have a ball. Key West could be a real fun deal if, mm -hmm. you know, if you like to party a little bit, you like to get out with the nightlife, do some drinking, do some dancing, do it. If that's your scene, yeah, Key West is probably probably the spot to go. Key West is a ball of diversity. Yeah. So. That is an understatement. <laughs> and then I would say if you are a couple um, of any age, whether you're young or a little older and... Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we got to wave to the neighbors as we go by on the canal. <laughs> Uh, but if you're a, uh, let's say, a little bit more mature couple still with no kids, Ala Mirada, a little fancier, maybe, you know, a little mm -hmm. nicer restaurants and dining yeah. and things as an average, a little bit more upscale mm -hmm. homes up there. The problem with Ala Mirada is if you're only coming down for a week, um, it might be tough to find a place in Ala Mirada because the single family homes on the water over there can only be rented for a minimum of 28 nights. Uh, at a time unless mm -hmm. you find you know one particular property that somehow was grandfathered in and has got some special zoning where you could do seven nights but for the most part 28 nights up in the upper, upper keys for renting a house for now. renting a single family yeah. home that doesn't mm -hmm. count condos uh doesn't count you know obviously your uh, hotels, hotels motels yeah. resorts things like that you can do all mm -hmm. that up there if you're going to stay but if you're going to rent a single family home and I'm getting on the throttles here, guys. We've got to go down the canal here in just a second. But it's if, a one-way canal, and you better hit it when you go because yeah. it's super Driving shallow right on here. both sides. So we want to be careful. Yeah, got it. Sorry for that, but I wanted to catch this so you guys could see down the canal as we take off. Yeah, it's a single lane, single lane canal, and I got to hit it just right. I'm sure this wind noise might might get a little weird. But we've got our mics on and hopefully you guys can still hear us. 
and wind blown. Yeah, we're testing out a lot of new stuff today, guys. So we're not sure how this is going to go. We got the GoPro on the front. We got the big camera pointing back at us. We got our lavaliers on. Uh, got our dead cats on, so hopefully it kills some wind. But it is a gorgeous day out here today, for sure. Yes, sir. And this is right after uh, Tropical Storm Agatha. Yeah, just let's talk about through. that in a minute when we slow down. Okay. I got to let these people behind me out. Slow back down to a snail's crawl here so you guys can hear us again. Yeah, so that canal that we just ran out of right there, that uh, that channel, that is the channel that comes out from Breezewet Beach Estates where Laurie and I live. And uh, it is a one way only, one boat at a time, in or out channel. Super, super shallow. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to make a mistake in there because there's hard limestone on either side and uh, you stay right down the center of that thing or you risk a uh, knocking the lower unit off your boat not good not good, not good. <laughs> <laughs> king and expensive yeah so anyway so where we leave off there with that um we were gonna couple about... maybe in isla yeah. a little bit maybe i don't know i wouldn't i don't know if i'd say nicer nightlife but you know then there are some certainly more not more so than key west but upscale restaurants in Alamorada. yeah um and they do cater a lot to you know the residents and the snowbirds as we call them that come down for just the winter yeah 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 and um i think the postcard inn is pretty popular in Alamorada. i think I We've don't heard know a lot for a fact, it. but I think Postcard Inn might be a, a pretty heavy-duty party spot. Yeah, I think so. For the so. younger crowd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the doesn't, mean, crowd. don't mean us oldies can't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not age-restricted. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so let's get a little bit to the middle keys as far as... Uh, we're, we're mainly talking vacation here, right? Yeah. So far, just, just, just right as now, vacationing just down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so middle keys, marathon, is basically right in the center of the keys. Mm -hmm. About an hour either way to Key Largo or to Key West. About, but remember a Roughly, lot of the roads yeah. are 45 miles an hour, so it can get pretty slow when you've got a lot of um, traffic down here. You know, a lot of people visiting or things like that. Summer yeah. months, um, the winter months are busy. Spring is, gets a little better and fall is pretty dead. <laughs> yeah, September and October down here in the Keys are, are very, very slow. Matter of fact, a lot of the restaurants will close for a couple of weeks to let their people have some time off. Yeah, take their Everybody vacations. Everybody take a breather because we go hard all year down here in the Florida Keys with vacations. Mm -hmm. And um, But anyway, the Middle Keys, let's look at that for a minute um, for vacationing. So Laurie and I have always vacationed staying in the Middle Keys. The primary reason for that was, guys, long long time ago i started coming down here with my fishing buddies we just ended up in marathon and it was the place that we could afford to go um, back then mm -hmm. uh, we we're literally pinching pennies to get down here any way we could they were and broke ass school teachers <laughs> <laughs> we were broke ass <laughs> and um, and you know so we started in marath marathon just because that's where a buddy of ours had come before that but what I learned about Marathon over the years was that, A, it's very central, so we could go down to Key West for a day trip, go up to Key Largo, go up to Isla Mirada, see some things, mm -hmm. and still come back to our home base in Marathon. But probably the most important reason was once we started renting homes. We wanted to bring our boat. We wanted to have somewhere to keep our boat right behind our place. We wanted to get up in the morning, go grab bait nice, jump on the boat, and head offshore for Mahi all day. And that was our our plan. We didn't really care that much about the eating out or the nightlife or any of that kind of stuff because quite frankly we didn't have much money to, <laughs> to spend on anything but bait, ice, boat fuel, okay maybe some beer. And that hundred dollar a pound red grouper, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Hundred dollar a pound red grouper, red grouper no doubt. 
So anyway, we go to Marathon, but here's the important thing to know about Marathon. Marathon, it is in the seven night, what I call the seven night rental district down here. So that means that if, you, if you're a, a homeowner here in the Keys, uh, the entire city limits of Marathon, uh, HOAs notwithstanding, uh, the entire city of Marathon, the city of Key Colony Beach, mm -hmm. All single family homes, you do have the right, and I'm sure there are some little exceptions here and there, but pretty much you have the right to rent your home there for as little as, as short a term as seven nights or longer. Mm -hmm. So for most people, you know, you might only be able to afford a week in the Keys. Right. Maybe and if you're not weeks. staying at a hotel and you do want a place on the water and you do want a place to keep your boat right out your back door, maybe you want a, your own private swimming pool, Marathon is a great place to look because you have the seven night rentals. Mm -hmm. You know, if the week's all you can stay, you can get that in Marathon. If you look outside Marathon, you may struggle a little bit to find anything. Uh, where you can rent that short. And you'll struggle a lot, actually. To find a, a home that you can home, rent. Yeah, like a single-family yeah. house. Mm -hmm. um, what other things do you like about Marathon for vacations? Um, I love the sandbar mm -hmm. uh, that you can go hang out on. I love Coffin's Patch, which is a beautiful dive spot. Um, just, what, two miles, three miles off? Yeah, it's about three miles uh, right off of uh, Key Colony Beach, kind of almost right out in front of Key Colony mm -hmm. Beach a little bit to the west. And uh, it is just a wonderful snorkel spot. Take the kids. Eight. People say it compa compares with diving in Hawaii and other places yeah. around the world as like just as good if not better. Yeah, we have yeah. heard that actually from a couple of experienced divers that uh, Coffin's Patch and uh, Lou Key that we're gonna go out to today for a little while and um, Sombrero Light in Marathon, I'm sure mm -hmm. John Penny Camp State Park up in Key Largo. But anyway, we've we've talked to a lot of divers who say that that have dove all over the world, and they say the Florida Keys are really some of the best scuba diving and snorkeling that they've ever seen. Same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Marathon has uh, some excellent locations for that, as mm -hmm. does Key Largo. Um, you know, Upper Lower Keys, Middle Keys. As far as the diving piece goes, I don't know that. I, a, we're not divers, so we really can't speak to that intelligently. But B, from what we hear, mm -hmm. living down here, if you're coming to scuba dive, pretty much Key West, Marathon, Isla Mirada, Key Largo, mm -hmm. you're going to have a ball. You're going to yeah. be able to get some great dive charters. You will. I think the thing I like best about Marathon mm -hmm. for a vacation is that there is there are just enough restaurants. There's two grocery stores. There's hardware stores. There's all the Home Depot. Home Depot. There's all the basics that you need for everything you need on your vacation. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of nightlife if you want to go looking for it. Although Marathon does shut down a lot earlier than Key West does, and not nearly as many choices stay open in the evening. No. And uh, but there's plenty of great dining there. Um, basically offers everything. I think that everywhere else does just on mm -hmm. a little bit more of a family feeling environment Would yeah you agree? yeah it's not as crazy as Key West can get at night yeah. so it's a better place you know bring your kids teenagers things like that that you may not want them to see everything they might see in Key West. yeah and there's <laughs> lots to do there for kids too I mean Marathon has a ton of stuff to do mm -hmm. Isla Mirada has a ton of stuff to do but I'm wondering would you say there's as, enough as many can kid friendly things up in Isla Mirada um, I don't think as much in Isla Mirada. I mean, we've got the aquarium in Marathon. We've got the Dolphin Research Center. Turtle the Hospital. Turtle Hospital. There's a skate park for the kids, a community park to go and play in, basketball courts yeah. and all that. Playgrounds. Tons and tons of charters. And yeah, tons of charters. Just about any kind of charter you want to do. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, we do obviously favor marathon a little bit for a lot of different reasons like that plus marathon overall i think is um, a little cheaper to stay certainly than in key west yeah and yeah. i would say certainly uh, cheaper than uh the upper keys too mm -hmm. key largo and alamorada could get a little bit more expensive marathon yeah. is if the word reasonable can be ever used down <laughs> here i would say uh reasonable is probably mm -hmm. marathon I would say. 
Well, I'm swinging the boat around. I got the GoPro shooting out the front, so hopefully you guys will see this view. But right out in front of us right here, this is right out our back door. Um, this is called Picnic Island. And everybody comes out here and anchors up on the sandbar out here. And you go up on the little island up there. Bring your picnic. Out, bring your picnic. <laughs> cool Mainly hanging out in the water. Yep. Yeah. And then over here, I'll turn the boat over this way so you can see this a little bit better. Right out there on the edge, if you can see that. And I'm hoping the GoPro, you can see things good enough um, over the water out here. But that is Little Palm Island. Very popular, um, real high-end vacation spot. You got to get out here by boat. They bring a ferry out. Rates out there are uh, super expensive for the mm -hmm. Keys, but it looks absolutely beautiful. Laurie and I have not been. <laughs> no, I think I think when I looked at it, it was maybe around 3000 a night. Oh, yeah? I think so. Don't yeah. quote me on that. You have to go on their website and find out. Yeah, I'm sure it varies depending on it. the time of the year yeah. and everything. But yeah, mm -hmm. I've heard <laughs> it's, it's never cheap. <laughs> <laughs> never cheap. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, so have we covered vacation stuff? What other vacation yeah. questions do we get commonly? Um, what about what kind of charter to take? What kind of charter to take? Well, do you want to go, you know, offshore? Do you want to go backcountry? You want to go? Okay, on the that's reef? a good point. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say if I wanted to go backcountry flats fishing, I'm probably not going to pick Marathon for that. No, that wouldn't be your um, best spot. Yeah, the backside, the Gulf side of Marathon, uh, it's pretty sparse when it comes to backcountry um, flats and little islands and true backcountry fishing. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of that there. It can be found and the marathon guides can still take you to backcountry flat stuff back there. But I would say that uh, if I was picking a spot to dedicate my trip to, if that's what I was going to do, do bone fishing or redfish or tarpon or you know whatever you're looking for, I would probably say uh, Isla Mirada would be tough to beat anywhere in the Upper Keys because you've got Everglades National Park coming down on the Gulf side on that side, tons of flats. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of those guys down there are specialists in that. Probably some of the best backcountry fishermen in the Keys are probably up in that area, and they specialize in that. Key West also has a lot of uh, backcountry fishing around Key West as well. So, but I would say nothing near like the Upper Keys would have. Now that's Gulf side backcountry fishing or ocean side backcountry fishing. They've got it both up there. If you're gonna go offshore. Mm -hmm. So you wanna go 15, 20 miles offshore or further and fish uh, for the offshore fish. Golly, I don't know that there is necessarily a better part of the Keys to do that from. Um, Marathon is very open, very clear, easy shot out across the reef, out to deep water, um, not much to run around or have to navigate. As you get up in the upper keys, you might run into a little bit more, um, you know, having to dodge things, having to go around islands a little bit longer, trip out to the reef, that kind of stuff in the upper keys. Mm -hmm. And of course, Key West, you know, offshore fishing is legendary. You know, you can go pretty much in any direction offshore <laughs> in Key West, uh, down towards the Tortugas or straight out south to the, uh, out to the deep water. So, but Marathon is a good balance for offshore fishing as well. Hey, we got a wake coming. We're gonna be bouncing around Just here. We'll see if our, how our camera does, if it stays <laughs> somewhat stable here. But what about backcountry fishing behind um, the lower keys, Big Pine and all that area? Well, that's, yeah, that's a good point. So um, where we live here in Ramrod, if you look on the map, um, Big Pine, starting at Big Pine and going down a good ways, probably Sugarloaf or so, mm -hmm. uh, there are miles and miles and miles of backcountry, just as, as far as you can as see. As far as you want to go. 15 miles from where we are 12 to 15 miles to the Content Keys, which you guys may have heard of before. Laurie and I have done some videos from there. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous out there. And there's a ton of backcountry 
skinny okay. water, poling fishing, all back in there. So yeah, big pine. Anything big pine and down to about Sugarloaf, yeah, would also be very good Gulf side backcountry mm -hmm. fishing. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And like where we are now, where we just came out. So we came out of our canal, we've idled pretty much this whole way right out here, but straight out in front of us right now, I mean, that's straight out is the reef. We'll run out there about five miles, we'll be on Lukey Reef, which is, uh, according to a lot of people, best dive spot in Florida Keys. Don't fish there. It's protected marine sanctuary. <laughs> Don't fish in there. <laughs> you better watch where you're fishing out here. Yeah. There are two places out right out here in front of us that are. There's actually a couple protected areas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can see those on your charts out there. They'll have the, the yellow buoys, four yellow buoys around them. Don't fish inside those areas. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, you know, uh, you can see how quickly we can get out if I actually ran from the, ch <clears throat> the channel out to the reef we probably could have been at the reef in the amount of time it's taken us just to sit here and talk to you guys yeah <laughs> this amount of time so uh it's a very short run out from here about from how where many we, miles um, would you say it is Deluki? Uh, roughly five five miles yeah roughly five okay and uh but it's straight out and then once you cross the reef and this is true all up and down the keys guys the whole way once you get out over the reef which in general the reef from shore is somewhere between five and seven miles from shore. Uh, you cross some 20 to 30, 40 foot deep water and then you get up on the, the uh, patch reefs. It shallows up again, anywhere from let's say five to 20 feet deep on top of the patch, <coughs> patch reefs. Mm -hmm. And then you hit the outside of the reef and it falls off deep, you know, 80, 100, 120 feet. And that runs all the way from Key West all the way up to Miami. So it's pretty much the same up and down the whole length of the Keys of getting out to the reef. You know, there'll be a couple miles difference in some areas of the Keys. But for the most part, it's about five to seven miles mm -hmm. out to the reef. And then you hit deeper water and it continually falls as deep as you want to go. That's right. Where are we, baby? We are at Luki. Reef. Lukey Reef. It's yeah. so pretty. It is. Guys, look out here. The water is We had to stop, break from our to topic for a minute because <laughs> some things <laughs> you just got to see down here. Look at the color of this water. This is amazing. I don't know if you can tell or not, but this looks like blue Gatorade it does. to me. It's yeah. the same color here in real life. If you were here with us, guys, <laughs> if you've seen the blue Gatorade. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep. That is that is the color of this water right now. Now, we'll say using different sunglasses will make the water even more intense. Yeah. And some blues or greens. Yeah. But even sure. if you take them off, I mean, it's still, it's blue. Yeah. Hey, little guys. Big guys. Dolphins right here. Woo. Hi. Hey, guys. That's a dolphin whistle right there. For everybody that don't know, that's a dolphin whistle. <laughs> come on, dolphins, come back up. We, we should probably turn around and see if they'll follow us so we can go by them. Here, okay. give me the camera. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're on it, baby. They're on it. Ooh, baby. Hello. They were they were right with the boat. There were three of them right with the boat. Oh, they're all right there. Got them. Getting in the water here at the reef. Awesome. There's lots of little um, yellowtail snapper down here too. Yeah? Yeah. I wish we could see them. I wish it was clearer today. Always tough on my tummy. <laughs> I'm a wimp. <laughs> Another word for it, but. <sighs> Feels I gotta so get in there too. You gotta get in here. Yeah. It's awesome. Got my Gatorade going on. <laughs> <laughs> People all out here and enjoying the water today. Guys, 
also to continue <laughs> this topic we got. So we talked about vacationing and which part of the keys we liked the best to summarize that. Laurie and I are going to pick Marathon mm -hmm. area for that, for being a central location, an hour roughly from upper end and lower end of the Keys. Which will include Key Colony Beach because Which, yeah, it's Key Colony Beach is right in, Marathon, in the middle of Marathon. Or right next to Marathon. Yeah. So, but, you know, for vacations, we're going to pick uh, Marathon just as the most versatile, uh, is, you know, more so family oriented, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. just, um, just an easier spot, I think, in general, anywhere the Keys without having to dedicate yourself to completely upper keys or completely lower keys kind of do it all for marathon that's so, right marathons are picked for vacations all right <laughs> let's talk about living in the florida keys so there's that's probably a two-piece discussion probably is try to not make this one as long as the, the first <laughs> piece but um so you know two things to consider if you're thinking about coming to the florida keys to live uh, the two situations we see most of the time is uh, it's either going to be your primary home, this is going to be your forever spot, and this is where you're going to live. There's kind of some things to think about there. And then if, it, if you want to have it be your secondary home or a straight investment property that you only come down and visit occasionally and otherwise would rent out uh, when you're not down here. But either way, you own a home here in the Florida Keys. Um, and that one, a lot of that, I think, when people call me and ask me about that, my, the first question I typically ask is, what's your intention with your house? Is it going to be your primary residence? If the answer is primary residence, I might go away from Marathon a little bit. What do you think? Yeah. If it was primary residence, I would say either Almorada or the Lower Keys for a primary residence. Yeah, I would, I would think so, too. Um, Marathon, because of its seven-night rental, uh, you know, ordinances up there, uh, you, you, you know, if you owned a home in Marathon, chances are that the house to the right or the left of you on a canal or wherever you live, especially on the canals, chances are you're going to have weekly renters in and out of that place. Um, if that's your scene, if you like that, cool, wouldn't be a mm -hmm. problem. If you're a little bit more in tune with knowing your neighbors and they're there most of the time and you live on a quiet little street, um, I probably would, would shy away from Marathon for that reason and, yeah. and try to find a primary home, uh, possibly from Big Pine down. Um, you know, obviously, Isla Mirada area is beautiful as well, like we mentioned. And a lot from that point on would have to do with um, the amount I could spend for the house. True. Um, if you're looking to live in the Florida Keys as your primary residence about as cheaply as you possibly can, um, you know, and this is a very general statement, but if I had to pick a, a general geography that, I'm starting at Big Pine and working my way down to about Sugarloaf Key. Anywhere in between there. So we're talking Big Pine, Little Torch, uh, Ramrod, Cudjo, Summerland. Um, well, Summerlin encompasses all the all way that, yeah. from uh, the Middle Torches, I think, down to Sugarloaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, now once you hit Sugarloaf, Sugarloaf starts to ramp up a little bit. Um, there's some really nice stuff in Sugarloaf. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the prettiest neighborhoods, I think, with, with it's still, you know, where we're not spending $10 million to buy a house, but, you know, you certainly could. <laughs> well, and Cudjo Gardens. Cudjo Gardens is a beautiful, beautiful. neighborhood. Um, uh, Sugarloaf, Lower Sugarloaf um, Boulevard out through there, that is a beautiful neighborhood. And it's more geared towards uh, primary residence. Um, Big Pine Key is kind of an anomaly. It's kind of cool. If it, you know, down here people call it country in the keys a little bit. Um, you can spread out a bit. You get a lot of land around you. Um, a lot is relative. Yeah, a lot. yeah. You're not, you know, don't get. Laurie and I came from Georgia. And, you know, <laughs> we came from six We're acres. used to a lot of land. We're not. Don't expect that. Not that kind of lot of land, but a general more spread out feel you can find in Big Pine and it's kind of out, you know, in the salt marshes and um, feels a little bit more like living in the country when you're down here in the Keys, if you like that. And the prices uh, kind of go with that as well. True. Um, there was actually a horse farm. There is a horse farm uh, somewhere, I believe it was Big Pine, Yeah. that I was, I was like tickled to death to find out there was horse farm. Now. 
I don't think it's for sale right now, but <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited just to know there was one. Yeah. So, you know, you, you kind of can find the type thing that you're looking for, but if you're going to be on the water, so if you've got to be on a canal or you've got to have boating access, that's going to cut you down a lot. And of course, anything that touches water in the Florida Keys, guys, the price comes with it for mm -hmm. sure. If you can live off the water and you want a bigger lot, uh, maybe a larger home, and uh, you know, try to save a little money on the place and not spend you know, at all because it has water access, um, you know, we can find you that down here. Mm -hmm. And Big Pine's a great place to look for that. Uh, yeah. Ramrod's a great place to look for that. Little Torch is a great place to look for that. Um, and it's much more economical if you don't live on the water and you just take your boat and put it in whenever you want to yeah. go, unless you're one of those, I need to go like five days a week. Well, that's probably not a good fit for you. But if yeah. you're going to go once a week, once every two weeks, you know, you've got a job, you've got commitments, then, you know, keeping your boat in your yard is perfectly doable. Yeah. So I would say to sum it up, you know, with, with living down here, um, it, it really does have a lot to do with, with how much you can spend for a home. So your sweet spot for a primary residence on the water at as low a price that we could find is going to be um, Big Pine to Sugarloaf mm -hmm. would be my, my opinion on that. Once we hit past Sugarloaf and get closer to Key West, prices start going up again because you're getting closer to Key West. And but there are a couple of places, um, Big Coppet and Stock Island, that I've seen some, yeah. you know, some yeah. lower priced housing there. Um, some on the water, some not, but yeah. a little bit. But then when you get into Key West. Well, yeah. one thing you got to keep in mind, guys, anything that we say on these videos, um, we're talking in generic terms. Uh, we're, we're talking averages and we're talking very generically. There's always going to be that one property, you know, mm -hmm. and if you call Laurie or I up and you want us to search for a property within a certain price range for you uh, with certain criteria, we can do that. It may take us a while, you know, may, we, we all may have to be patient to find the perfect place for you. But, you know, Laurie and I are very sensitive to people's budgets and what they need. We certainly are for our own budget. Mm -hmm. And we, we appreciate that not everybody, you know, has the ability to come down here, live this lifestyle. And, and you know, it's an, it's an open checkbook. So Laurie and I are very in tune with that. We wanted to live this lifestyle. We found a way to do it. Uh, we're not rich by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, we found a way to do it and we made some sacrifices and they are to be found. And we could probably find them in the upper keys, mm -hmm. middle keys, lower keys. But, um, you know, speaking in general, mm -hmm. um, most reasonable area of the keys for primary residence is going to be uh, Big Pine to Sugar Left. Yeah. All right. What about uh, if money were no object? Ooh, and it was your primary residence. Money, no object, primary residence. Where are we living in the Florida Keys? <laughs> Millionaire's Row. I'm, I'm saying probably Isla, Isla Morada. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably saying Isla yeah. Morada. Uh, we can find you a fancy one up there, guys, for sure. And yeah. uh, but bring your checkbook. Make sure it's fat. <laughs> <laughs> and do be aware that if you come down here and would like to look at houses. Um, it's getting very popular for the sellers to want proof of funds or, you know, lenders pre-approval or sure, something like sure. that. Well, you know, you people know. don't just open the door at a $10 million house and say, come on mm -hmm. in, take a look around for every tourist that walks into town. So that's to be expected. You know, right. if I was a homeowner in a home like that, and quite frankly, in the home that we have right now, if I, if I were selling it, I'd, you know, I'd want to say, hey, look, you know, let me know that you can actually afford this house and let's go forward from there. So right. uh, it's a very common thing down here. So mm -hmm. if you work with a real estate agent, hopefully you'll work with, with Laurie or I. Um, but, you know, that is an important piece of the puzzle and it lets people know up front that you're serious about buying a home. Regardless of whether it ends up being here in the Keys or not, at least you have the ability to do so. And uh, I typically talk to people about that when they call me and say, hey, let's, let's make sure that when we walk in the door, we actually have the ability to do this thing so that we're not wasting the uh, the owner's time with looking at their house mm -hmm. yeah so in 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 a nutshell guys um for the luxury you can find luxury up and down the keys anywhere you want to be yes um again a general statement the isla Mirada, tavernier area is excellent beautiful mm -hmm. homes up there beautiful large lots um 
you know, the sky's the limit up that way. Marathon is also has some very, very beautiful, beautiful homes, homes, beautiful areas. We can find them in Marathon as well. Um, so same could be said for any part of the Keys, but if we were targeting in a place and you wanted to go see four or five homes in a day with us, and depending on the criteria you had, I can tell you which part of the Keys we're gonna have the most success in most likely mm -hmm. uh, until we find that diamond in the rough for you. Right, and Which, I can say Key Largo is really close to the mainland. Yeah, yeah. So if you need to get, you know, be going to doctors or things that are going to be on the mainland, not accessible on the islands, um, Key Largo might be a great place for you. And I have seen some more affordable places. Now, they're not going to be fancy, and they're probably not going to be what you would expect somewhere else in the country, price-wise. Yeah, but, you can't um, compare it to the mainland. No, you can't. Well, you can compare it to West Palm and, and Miami, and well, we're, we're cheaper. Coastal. Yeah, that's true. Don't coach. compare it to Central Florida uh, <laughs> or other areas of Florida down here in the Keys. Yes, the prices are definitely higher in general. And mm -hmm. again, generally speaking, there's always exceptions to every rule. That's true. But um, And then, you know, like you bring up, Key Largo is a great place if you're someone that needs to travel a whole lot and you need to be close to Miami, Fort Lauderdale airports. Uh, there is, Key Largo has a lot to offer and you mm -hmm. still are in the Keys. And uh, there's a lot of beautiful homes up in that area for sure. I mean, up at the very oh, yeah. top of the Keys, you know, probably one of the most exclusive communities down here is Ocean Reef up there, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, again, this is for nine out of 10 people that call us, not the one that calls us and says, hey, look, I want this house in this price range and I want it to be in this area. We probably can find that anywhere in the Keys, you know, given the money's right mm -hmm. but um so speaking of generalities yeah middle middle keys mm -hmm. probably your your best bet for uh, middle to lower keys is your best bet for lower priced right housing. all right so what if you wanted to own a house down here mm -hmm. but you're going to use it as your secondary you might rent it out you know a portion of the year um cash flow is not your number one priority you want to rent your place out, you might come down half the year. Well, if you're going to do that, you know, the lower keys are great, and but they do have a 28 to 30 night minimum rentals yeah. in the lower keys. So, and you have to be prepared that probably the times you want to be here from maybe January to April yeah. are going to be the times you need to rent it if you want rental income. You know, summer months are okay, probably not as good. So um, you're really gonna need to go to Marathon or Key Colony Beach if you wanna keep that rental going at a, you know, a lot of different times of the year that you may not be using it. Well, if you're from up north in the United States, you live up in the Northeast somewhere up, you know, where you're cold and you wanna get down here during the, um, the typical time that most people do if you live in a colder climate, you're typically going to be going to want to be down here from let's say Thanksgiving to April somewhere in that mm -hmm. vicinity. And if you own a home here, just know that that is <clears throat> our peak rental season. Um, so if you want to stay in your home during those cold months back home, <laughs> and you want to come down here to where it's you know 70, 75 degrees every day, um, you're going to be missing out on your peak rental times that you could be renting that house out and trying to cover, let's say, you know, break even for the year and, you know, cover your basic expenses on the house and let somebody else pay for it by renting uh, your place. Mm -hmm. Well, it's something very key for you to know there. The summer months down here are kind of, you know, built around family vacations. They're built around that one week or maybe two week vacation that the average family, that's what they're coming down here for. They get their one to two weeks in the sun and that's about all they can do for the year and, and they leave. Well, if you own a house in one of the zones where the minimum rental time period is 28 nights, unless you can find families or whoever's gonna come rent your place that can stay down here for a whole month, mm -hmm. You know, which let's just face it, there's not that many there's people not, by comparison. But with people working from home more now, yeah. I think that might be more, you know, applicable than it was previous to COVID. I, I agree with you totally on that. Mm -hmm. Since uh, since COVID and since you know COVID taught a lot of uh, industries nationwide that hey, we can let people work remotely. We're seeing a lot more people that can live full time in the Florida Keys or at least half the year in the Florida Keys. And, um, mm -hmm. and it works out good because they can work remotely. So uh, we may see a little change in that. But getting back to the point, mm -hmm. if you and I were buying a house right now that as our secondary and we were going to spend, let's say, 
part of the year down here. Our part of the year we would spend down here is the summer months. We it love the summer months here. Mm -hmm. We like it hot. We like it where we can be out here on the water. Like the sweat, baby. Yeah, goofing <laughs> off on the water all the time. You know, So for us, it wouldn't be a problem. We could turn around and go back to Georgia, maybe spend a few months in the winter time. It's not that bad up there. Mm -mm. And let our house be rented here, You know, let's say from December to April, something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case for us, those type renters, you know, um, they come down and, and sometimes rent two and three and four months at a time. So because our home is located in the 28 night rental zone, it wouldn't be a problem for us and we'd probably make good money on that place during those, uh, our peak season here, but what everybody else figures is off season somewhere else because it's cold. Mm -hmm. um, if your situa situation is opposite of that and you want to be here when it's cold where you came from and warm here in the Keys, I definitely push you towards any of the areas where you can rent your home seven nights yes. at a time because you can keep your rentals going throughout the summer with the family crowd coming in. Um, you got a better chance of consistently renting your place over and over and over again mm -hmm. and making that money that you're looking to make. You agree? And also there's Venture Out, which is a park, and they go to one night minimum rentals. So if yeah, you buy a house in there... You yeah, there's, there's places in the Keys. There's always exceptions to the rules, mm -hmm. guys. And we, you know me, I like to talk a lot. You already see on the videos. You call me on the phone, I'm going to talk your ear off on <laughs> all of the little ins Plan and outs. Plan on an hour conversation <laughs> or more. Yeah, all of the little ins and outs. But I want you to be informed, you know. Laurie and I want to help people find the right situation uh, for their particular situation. And every property is different and every uh, buyer is different and every seller is different. So, you know, it's important that you really look at things from a lot of different angles and it's important for us as real estate agents to mm -hmm. fully understand what it is uh, the goals of our buyers are, you know, and what, what is your long-term goal with this? What is your short-term goal with that? And let us try to help you find a scenario that works for you. So answering the question simply, mm -hmm. what's the best place for the keys to live in? There's just not an answer to that, is there? There's not. It does depend on every individual. Yeah. It really does. So you've got to decide what your wants and needs are. You know, if you want to work with us, great. Let us know and we will steer you in the right direction. Um, but, you know, definitely. We won't steer. Oh, sorry. Real estate, word. Real estate agents can't steer. We won't steer. We will We will help educate you because <laughs> Laurie and I were explore educators in another life places that might be the most <laughs> beneficial for you <laughs> exactly exactly we'll give you the most information that we can guys we'll be honest with you we'll tell you the good with the bad um you know the, we we are the kind of people that uh, will tell you yeah don't do the, that the bad it's things it's a bad you know? idea you know and, and here's why we'll give you our reasons and if your reasons mm -hmm. differ from ours god bless you buy it let's do this thing yeah. but but if, uh, if it's not, you can count on Laurie and us to, to, to give, a, give you everything that we can openly and honestly and tell you what we think and what we might do if we were in that same situation. So, And we yep. didn't even really mention Key West as far as living full time. Yeah, we didn't even mention Key West as a primary. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, Key West is probably the most populated area of the Keys. There is. Without and a I, doubt. Yeah. I would definitely consider moving to Key West full time, mm -hmm. um, you know, and of course money is an object. So that kind of puts a, you know, something on it. But, um, yeah. you know, we would probably pick something not on the water. We would pick something that had a bigger yard, which obviously is going to cost more money because Key West is, you know, a very small town. Yeah. So the lots are not as big, but mm -hmm. I would want that outdoor space. Um, even versus the water, because I know we can put our boat on a trailer and take it to the boat ramp yeah. and get in whenever we want. You know, I, I asked Laurie last time we were down in Key West doing some running around, I said, you know, what would you think about living here in Key West? And it's kind of a, it's a tough thing to answer for us because you have every amenity you want. Uh, Close. There's actually shopping in Key West. There's Very not anywhere shopping. else. <laughs> um, you know, you have everything you need in Key West. You have the airport right there in Key West, so it's easy to jump on a plane and fly back to somewhere that you need to uh, without making the drive up to Miami. Key West would be cool. The problem with Key West, in my opinion, and for our circumstance, is the property is exceptionally expensive mm -hmm. at, at our budget. Um, and what you get for that same dollar is a lot smaller in general than what we could get for that same dollar in Ramrod, where we are. Right. 
Um, you know, and Laurie and I have talked recently. We love Ramrod. We love the neighborhood. We've met mm -hmm. a lot of good friends, but we really sincerely enjoyed the the marathon area. We like hustle and bustle, don't we? Yeah, we like a little, yeah, a little hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's probably in our future plans at some point. Nothing that we're short-terming about right now, but probably in our plans to go back up to marathon at some point. Buy us a home. I can't believe I'm saying this. Probably not on the water so that we can get the bigger yard, the bigger house, drop a big pool in, have a yeah. big tiki hut, have places for friends to come and stay with us and enjoy that environment mm -hmm. instead of putting a good chunk of money into, um, <laughs> oh, somebody screamed, probably a bar <laughs> barracuda in the water. Um, instead of putting a chunk of money into being on the water, which mm -hmm. does take a, a lion's share of the money down here. If you're touching water, that's that's where the money is. It is. And uh, we find that we don't use our boat as much as we might have thought we would have. Um, but and we are down here working. We're working, yeah. So it's not a vacation for us. You know, every day is a work day, basically. And when days that we don't have much going on, yeah, we'll go get on the boat. Like today. Like today, yeah. yeah. They're few and far between for us these days, and <laughs> which is okay. And we still get out on the water and get to enjoy ourselves. But mm -hmm. um, you know, I think at the end of the day, we'll probably enjoy ourselves more with a larger lot, a bigger place where we can entertain friends yes. and guests, and a fenced-in yard so I can have a dog again. And that I miss my dogs. And that. <laughs> and that. <laughs> so anyway, well. Hopefully, guys, something we've said in this video, I know we've been super long-winded, but we appreciate you watching um, and taking your time with us and, and hearing what we have to say about it. And like I said, give us a call. Uh, we'll put all of our information that you need to contact us in the, video, in the uh, video description below the video. I'll flash it up on the screen throughout several times. Mm -hmm. And uh, feel free to give me and Laurie a call at any time. We'll have the same discussion with you in private over the phone. Mm -hmm. Find out what your situation is and see if we can help you find uh, a way to make your dream and the keys come true. That would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time on Gables on the Go. See you later. Bye.